beach. Dogs like her. In her darker moments, she thinks they can smell the blood on her hands. No matter how hard she scrubs at her skin, how red raw her fingers sting, still they come. Sniffing, breathing, instincts drawn to a primitive being. So, and seeping knuckles in a panic at the sink, red floods her eyes. Then she remembers the blood is only her own, her son's in disguise. She's on a beach, contemplating her mortality. She's exiled. They don't like violent women. They don't understand how such soft hands could tear their own flesh break their own bones, unable to connect or comprehend how her thoughts could ever extend to she must be ill, the pressure's too high for her mother's milk. But they're lucky if they had easy children to feed in their homes. They don't tell you what to do with the ones you love, no longer love you. If your children don't like you, there's no leaflet or book be the fire, take its toll, be the strength they need, fuel your home, be the backbone. She thinks, they sleep, they eat, they feed, until they grow strong, stronger than me. She's in recovery and thinks, I'll go and stay by the sea, get some fresh air in me, try not to drink so much any more. Always now careful of how many closely measured glasses are poured. One too many, one gin too merry, and she's flushed with imagery. Her body moaning, wrapped up in the heat, and he's all she can see. So she lies in the sand, trying to look discreet. Trying to blend in, hoping not to be seen. Sand in her toes and a dog at her feet. Welcome back to society. Let the integration begin. The water is different now. The ground is dry and the waves softly lull in a slow but steady breathe out and pull. Moved by the rhythm of the tide, one enormous swell, one lethargic breath at a time. Lapping at the bay, sheltered from the wind, a taste from the salt spray. Agave lies still, allowing her lungs to fill and lead and sink deep sea breathing in time with the waves. She watches children being cared for on the beach. There's something about their discovery of sand, shouting out loud beneath small hats that shield, protect them from the sun, burying secret things when nobody is watching, sucking the salt from their hair, stones in hand open voices on the air, eating sand, surrounded by a rather large range of multicolored deck chairs. She allows the noise to surround her, surround her inflamed skin and swollen face, swollen cheeks from too much gin. She lives on like this, it could be worse, until one day at the sink, one final flashback too many, she snaps. Three measures too much too merry, hands clutching, clasping at empty glasses, in a drunken state thinking, fuck this, I can beat it, I'm going back, I decide who I am. Drunkenly she packs a bag, grabs a coat, no one to leave a note to, she empties the flat of all the rubbish, cans and fags, and before she knows it the winds of the sandbank whistle in her ear, and she's outside in the rain, blurry eyed. But after an hour at a bus stop in the beckoning night, her breathing slows. Her mind races on, but the cold creeps slowly back into her bones. She waits for a sign. 
the wind is high and she can hear angry waves crashing on the shore in the night lamenting her pain thrashing at the ground that keeps her restrained she's estranged to her old ways to her home tears sting her eyes and memory pulls at her throat stories run wild of how we came to be so hard skinned and who invokes our memories she waits for a sign there's no one around except for an old drunk man stumbling to a doorstep it's the middle of the night where are you are you listening to me she speaks to the sky what do you want from me roaring blind agave screams into the night i get no relief from what you did to me i get no relief in how it's meant to be in the depth of the night i tread the blue with only darkness beneath me The old man shrugs his shoulders and goes inside. She waits for a sign. But gods have nothing to gain when there's nothing new to say. It's a waste of their time. Birth. In a long growing dawn, within the peaceful eye of a raging storm, I was laid. Left alone, I was born, content in a bed made, lest a parent forget, and I grew strong. I slept, I was fed, I slept and I grew strong. A god that has grown in the wind and is born in a storm. Late in the night, he pushes a thorn into my side. Late in the night, into my side. Late in the night, my tissue is torn. My skin growing thin, he tries to steal my name. To push further in and increase the pain, but I say no. So he waits till I am full grown. He waits until I am alone. He thinks a city made for me, a city of earth built over leaves, the city of dirt, the place of my birth, my city of Thebes lies at my feet. It sleeps, it feeds, it sleeps until I return. A petrol can in my hand, my feet as fire in the streets, but nothing stirs. Still the city sleeps. Raging away every other day, roaring blind. He slits my hands, building walls. He calls my name, his anger won't subside. But my hands, they feed, these floors that align, these rooms they breathe, they let my soul be. I mark my lines, my blood's in its veins. I say to him, you can't drive me away. I say, these walls were made and these walls will remain for my ghost to roam. This is my home. So he waits until she is fully grown. He waits until she is alone. Amid this birth and dirt and soon to be bone, he's denied. They should be falling at his feet, dancing in the roads of these sun-drenched streets of, when it suits him, his city. He needs to be recognised in this city of Thebes. She was a main contender, 
in this denial of his godly pride. Her nephew, vine-clad spawn of Zeus, pouring at the earth on which his mother died. So to suit his needs, he calls her name while she sleeps. How dare she deny me, this king mother of Thebes? She laughed him off, not a real god. No seed of Zeus! I'll raise this city and I'll bring her to her knees. Idol In the night, she turns on the radio so she can't hear him. She closes her eyes and thinks of all the other people who listen to the radio, who let the music in. She turns up the volume, but she can still hear her name. She thinks you again, with your overheated, burning body laid heavy against the curve of my spine. You swine! I know your type. Well, I'm not listening to you. It's not right. He tells her he understands how such soft hands can be taken for granted. How she doesn't see how free she is or could be. The ability to create her own path, to secure her own destiny, it's right there beneath. He whispers in her ear, sends her visions of fearless revisions of her life. A forest freedom, destroyed domesticity, a bottle and a half in and she's a fucking visionary. It's night. Pentheus hears a clink and thinks, oh shit, she's on one. You're drunk. Did I ever tell you that you have more of me in you than you would care to admit? Not enough of your father's standing, his grand gestures made in landing him Death. Man of sorrows. That's what your name means. Like father, like son, you're marked for tragedy. And if we continue to deny him, go to bed, says her son. Go to bed, you're drunk. Feeding his feuds, a vengeful god taints the air, sowing his seeds. If only she held her own, then she could be free. Home. She's not sure when the change was, when she first became a hindrance in her own home. Doors closing early, abrupt words cut off mid-sentence, no longer heard, though her thoughts were no less. Teenage years behaving absurd. It'll pass. He's at that age, of scornful gazes and prying eyes. Uncomfortable silences, irritation in company and heavy sighs at questions, slamming doors, irritation no less, daring to even enter the same room as him, no less, not really understanding why, she feels stupid. She feels the heat in her bones flare up in an instant at locked doors, shut down screens, secrets held close in meetings that she's not there for so she cannot oppose. Don't even think about it, hallway greetings. Darkening rooms and significant meetings, living alongside a longing to escape a spreading disease. It seeped into all the corners of the house, like a rising damp, a shadow pronounced it sits in silence. In rotting wood, in growing ivy, it seeps around rooms growing violent. Over time, rotting stone and carpets frayed and died from heavy pacing and overspilled wine. The disease is at work. It grows until only shadows shine through blinds and she's kept to one room for long periods of time. Agave has obeyed the expectation of her life. She married wisely, she bore her children and her life developed through a maternal infusion. She has lived as society dictates she must even when sisters mate with gods and keep their name in disgrace. She thinks what for? Widowed, 
alone with one child left, to be left in a rotting room where no one would even notice if she was gone, if she had been gone for days. She's placed further and further away, just out of reach, in a sort of restrictive dress, with books to read, to keep her occupied, with tea. No need to come and talk to me. Out of reach, untouchable. Why should she need company? You don't need to talk to me. Her son, in another room, on his knees in early midnight defeat, he shuts her out to carry alone and remains silent until she leaves. So she waits. But the disease pulsates from his room at the end of the hallway, spreading its limbs, stretching, making its arc throughout this dying house. He stopped listening. A continuous ticking, the darkness thickening and the sound is too loud for her ears. A pain's in her thigh and a god is alive. I'll try one more time. It's not that she doesn't love him. It's just that once Pentheus became king, it really did bring about a change. Unfortunately, the worst in him. But there are moments when I want him to be graceful in his manners and a force to be seen. There are times when I urge him to rule with a hand that gives the people what they need, that conquering alone isn't enough to claim his territory. Holding it requires the ability to govern. Holding it requires the resources to love them. Of course, stories run wild about the qualities of kin, the strength of the beast, the force of the god, the wildness within him. But nothing can ever measure up to the construction of a king. So how can he win? I go to my son. I go to the lion howling alone on his knees in early morning defeat. He shuts me out. I look to a daughter, but turn to ash. She lies deaf to me, lost in a fire of her own. And I'm left in a calling hallway. Yearning. A stirring storm through a doorway calls to me. Agave breathes. The disease doesn't stop at an outward reach. It's struck within. It riots through these walls soon to wear thin. The walls of this house soon to crumble in sin. She moves her feet. And here she comes. To that second last step on the stair that creaks. A final moment in the doorway before she leaves. Death between two worlds. Her footsteps sink in time with a deep sleep breathing, breeding monotonous political dreaming of leaving her loved ones behind. A deep breath is taken before she takes flight, a breath so deep it stings in the night. Eyes wide, lungs tight, she reclaims her life. The salt taste in her mouth, the deafening blood pound. How's that for surround sound? As if she had found desire, as if she was 16 again. With Echion's breeding laid on her back, brought to her knees. The kisses in this breeze are sweeter than that. Better than any physical gratification. No complications. Limbs free to blaze under no man's gaze. She's under the stars led by constellations. The air smells damp in the earth, it moans, it groans to her, it heats her bones. Damp in the night as the moon lights the night, greeted by Nyx as she leaves her home. Into the woods she goes, to make a life of her own. Messenger 1 your mother is with them. I just thought you ought to know. Dirt. I. She sleeps on the ground. She finds trouble sleeping the first few times. She finds new aches in her joints where her limbs realign. No use for her voice but she learns to let go, and the ground takes her weight as her bones reshape. 
It's tough on her skin. It pulls at her throat. She grows thin, but she knows she's made no mistake. Preparing, sharing her strife on the mountainside with dirt in her toes, her blood on the stones, making way for the night. She calls to Nix to be kind until she grows in the wind. She's lean in the storm. The sun rises higher and she's alive with the dawn. In the woods with Dionysus. There are others. At first, she is shy, but it's her Bacchic right to be here, so she drinks from the cup. He is the god of wine. Then she realises she can just relax. Her shoulders drop. There's no watching, no sense of all eyes on you, no apologising. She holds herself differently. No shrinking, being seen, fed from the earth and quenched from a stream. No fear, no holding keys in between your fingers in case of attack. No eyes on you, no being followed to your front door. No avoiding eye contact so as not to encourage unwanted attention. No crossing the road to avoid them. No patronising tones and really, really wishing to just be left alone. Honeyed gifts from a god and dew from the dawn on your skin. Miracles from vines to pay your respect and ease your mind. Yo, Dionysus! Until she's so relaxed that she falls even deeper in. Rave. In different houses, in every city, in different rooms lay loyalty, love and death, passion, words and water, fire, earth and air. Every country lays in birth, dirt and bone. Evolving, constantly moving in a rhythmic tide of its own. She thinks how much she loved hearing music. Varied moods emerging, rolling around rooms beneath a row of roofs lined up in the street. All with people, people just like you and me. It's in the background of kitchens, behind passions with one another, an echoing frame leading lovers into meetings. When music swells, stories from keys, these strings, the marks they leave, the heat stirred up from these notes, Friction from a string, songs from the air, music made from silence enthralling the stratosphere, its ability, its integrity, it would bring her to her knees. Shoulders squared, heart full of rhythm, the only time she ever felt free. Until now. She follows the sound. Her head swims in the trees. The floor falls beneath and they are floored by the gifts of sound. Ecstasy is the transcendence of the ordinary state, suggesting an intensification of emotion so powerful as to produce a trance-like dissociation from all but the single overpowering feeling. It is an altered state of consciousness that moves a person beyond the self into a unified awareness, expanding our spiritual awareness and enhancing our physical abilities. Dionysus instigates this trance and ushers us into his realm of ecstatic awareness. It's women only. Their bodies moving, their limbs now alight, dancing themselves into a frenzy, their liberation from a status, falling free of psychological barriers. They are in seclusion to be free. When another body is so energized, to stood beside you so wise and so loud that it brings in a crowd, and you stand there with them so proud watching, 
Teary-eyed at these sounds from the air Words from a mouth you can't quite believe Shapes, figures, colours and sounds All beside bodies beside you And you've never felt so alive This energy radiating through a crowd Searing sounds and no sense that hang in the ether Another element An immense sound of love to date Revealing a higher ground your breath held in case you miss a word. Her body shakes. She doesn't try to control it. No restraint, there's too much at stake. She wants to feel every moment to give her whole self up to this glorious God that shook her awake. She's so nervous, no one knows what he's going to say. They're so nervous because they can't wait to hear what he has to say. Agave's sick to her stomach, he's three steps away. At arm's length she can feel his energy. He's electric. She's there for the music. She's there for the feeling of freedom. Blood pounds in her ears and she feels the years of heartache slip away. But she needs to reach another level to maintain the pace To reach the pinnacle and force the moment to its crisis She's given her soul and delved in deep In a sway of ecstasy, bodies entwined She stands at the forefront here with Dionysus Now, even in freedom In a group of liberated women looking to feed it's human nature to form allegiance, for someone to lead. And finding her strength in bleeding feet, Agave's face is to the sun, and she hears her name on the breeze. These frenzied feelings grow at such a fast pace, you get lost in the race, completely out of hand, you can barely stand as you get so out of your mind that time stands still. Days roll by as your deepening thrill keeps you alive. And that's when gods whisper names in the wind. Lions leave their pride and sons come to spy in disguise. Messenger 2 your mother is with them. I think they just want to be left alone. But Pentheus has a plan. He's a man of his own. Lion. He's intrigued. He cannot resist seeing the forbidden. Watching his mother reclaiming her freedom. This is going to be good. He knows what they're doing up there in the mountains. Soft white thighs drenched in wine and no restraint. And they tell me it's innocent. Give me a break. You would never approach a tribe, let's say, unprepared. He's been promised flesh. Pentheus has been dreaming visions of skin, unapologetically at ease. But they're not so easy to find, their true selves now hidden behind trees. Hearts on their sleeves, now exposed to the sky. Whispers of violent tendencies. So he goes in disguise. Dress, heels, black lines shaping his eyes. He's one of them. They won't accept you if you don't look alike, the god says. His own societal stripped back show, the big tease reveal of his lion's pride. Stripped of his masculinity, or so he's been advised. Into the woods he goes, assuming he'll survive. To kill my son, the lion. Her breath is hot and quick. The adrenaline in a rush to cover all her limbs. Don't let yourself think of this sickly pit her stomach sings. 
Stay in the moment, please stay with me. I get the feeling you're trying to leave. She sees a shadow in the trees. She feels a steadying breeze and the beat of a rhythm that sets her free. But there is movement in between the bark. Paws firmly on the ground. An intruder keeping his presence unknown. But she sees beyond and catches a glimpse of that lion's throat. I knew I wasn't alone. This one has to go. Bring me the head! Thinking he's the king, swanning in all proud and believing his sleek lion's mane can keep him safe in these woods where now only women remain. I'll show you lion, hear me roar, bigger and braver than I ever was before. Agave leads. Bring me the head. She calls to her tribe to bring that lion down from the inside. Take his crown. Tear down the tree, rip through vines, rhythmic frenzy with only one thing in their mind. To pull limb from limb with their own freedom to win. He hits the ground, removing makeup in a hurry, in a plea to his mother's milk and love me now. She must recognize me, mother, you must know me. But she knows no boundaries. He is brought to his knees and she thinks I must have that lion's head. Mounted on a spike in this light of day, opportunity presents itself and I must win this fight. The tendons are tight. The blood's warm. Joints once aligned, now torn apart. Neck cracked, violent art. The light leaves his eyes, and he thinks, my god, gods are cunts. Just before he dies, she breathes fast. The stillness lasts, heads pound with racing heartbeats, and feet start descending back down. Others start to leave. Brought back to the ground, come down fast, the frenzies past. Shivering starts. It's 7 a.m. and the sun's not ready to comfort their art. What seems like moments pass by when you come down from the skies that once held you so high in a sway of ecstasy. You truly believe in this feeling and as of yet no real reeling as to what you have done. Bone. After. She's left alone on the shore, a little unsure of how she came to be. Hair entangled, and her limbs so sore from the lessons of love. Bruises emerging, the winds picking up, skies quick thickening with the water's rage sickening, and the deafening sound of a thundering cloud is all that surrounds her now as the rain starts to fall. Her blood pounds, realization dawns, reality sets in and the situations roar. Her chest sears with pain, no longer numb, sensations returned and her heart burns again. It hits the water like a wall of rain over me and embrace my fall. Bare laid lone bones, all of this woman's own, her and her son stripped down to the core. Her chest swells, her shoulders ache, her throat melts as she lay on the stones, ego thrown, she thinks, I must be in hell. Agave breathes. She is alone. A focus on the physical pain turns to a soft glaze, and her body weight lays heavy on the ground now. The gravitational pull on her concentration down to a level where it all evens out. Her vision stops spinning and all the fears and the doubts come to a standstill. A rhythm is found. Her heart roars and this god that she adores is nowhere to be found. She's left alone with her freedom and blood on her hands. She tries to stand. No tribe to hear her moans. 
Near her now, all senses seized by the throat. No care for the smell, only a stench of flesh and nothing else left to soothe her own throat. Fresh earth dug out, turned over to bury his bones. Wet dirt, stained stones, on the edge of the water what remains of a daughter. And where once was a home, now full of grief. Tears wept for the loss of hope and for the people they could have been. Left in a mess of a rattling carcass and freshly torn flesh, the birds come to pray. She thinks I'll stay here a little longer, till my legs can grow stronger, then I'll face the day. She hears someone behind her. Her father appears in all his glory. He's asleep at her throat. She breathes deep and she knows she can't speak. Gut thrown, cut throat, brought to her knees, and only a stench in the air from forgotten Theban streets. He says, your apology is boring. What once was seen is so diligent now, turns to a pouring. Your pride is pouring landfill into the wake child. What once burnt bright child has turned sour and grave child. You're dead to me. She says, it wasn't all my fault. I wasn't always alone. She thinks of the women, Pentheus, Echion. The music, her father and his hatred for what she has done, of Dionysus. I thought I was in control. I've lost all my own. He held my gaze and it placed a hunger in my soul. I heard a truth, your senses were thrown. I bowed to the earth, he called my name. I've been devoured by a god who promised me I could be free if I held my own. Gods play games. They prove a point until you listen, until you bow to their dismissal of human integrity, and they show you how little you mean in the grand scheme of the sky. He says, you're dead to me. Don't you ever come home. She thinks I'll stay here a little longer, till my legs can grow stronger, then I'll face the day. Stories run wild of how we came to be so hard-skinned, and who invokes our memories? The names of those who leave their mark upon our skin, where now only an imprint remains. So when her senses are seized by the wine, and she's brought to her knees and can't keep it contained, Agave goes back inside, in from the rain. To sleep, to eat, to feed, to grow strong, to lick her wounds in peace. She looks to the sky while the waves and the sea thrash on. <laughs>